Welcome. This is Joe DeFeo, CEO of Duran Institute, and I welcome those of you who have been here before back to our uh, monthly webinar. And for those of you who are new, welcome. For those of you in the United States last week, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. For those of you outside of the United States, I hope you had a good week. Our topic today is how to continuously improve your continuous improvement program. And uh, in the next 45 minutes or so, uh, we'd like to shed some light on this important topic. Uh, this topic was selected because the demand we had for the question, um, how do I keep my continuous improvement program alive? Now, uh, David Fioran is not here today, so I'm your host and speaker. And I would like to remind you all that you can send in a question anytime you would like to, uh, and we will see them and try to answer them as we go along. Uh, or if you just want to say how great uh, my speaking ability is, uh, you're welcome to do that too. Uh, or just sit back and hopefully we can present something useful to you today that you can pass along to your colleagues as well. How to continuously improve your CI program. Now, what's very important is uh, what we're trying to accomplish here today. And um, so, you know, we, we talk about continuous improvement programs being um, the programs in your endless journey to make improvement in the company and we are improving the company but the programs themselves go through starts and stops they go through ups and downs and they in themselves need some improvement or maybe a better word is not improvement but refocus or revitalization uh, so we're going to talk about why programs need it and maybe look at some of the reasons not Secondly, there's a uh, common question that's asked of us when uh, we are working with an organization. They've heard stories from other organizations that we need to have, uh, you know, one percent of our population trained as experts like black belts and lean senseis, and five percent as green belts and ten percent as yellow belts, uh, and that's just not correct necessarily. A second part of that is we do 10 projects this year, 20 next year, 50 the following year, 100 the next year. In other words, proven projects seem very linear. You keep growing them. And that's not the case either. Uh, in both scenarios, the amount of improvements you do should be driven by the business need. So, you know, this year we might have a real big need and have a bunch of improvement activities going on. And, Two years from now, we might be doing really well and we back off and three years from now, we go in a different direction. So we're going to talk about how you should think about uh, the main, the heart of most CI journeys and that's the projects. Uh, and also as a organization evolves, CI must evolve from, you know, your, your decision to do CI to the maturity that you're in. And, and we're going to use our Duran roadmap to help explain some of those steps along the way and what happens and what doesn't happen. Uh, so let's do a baseline setting. You know, we're using the term CI, continuous improvement like programs, because uh, every industry has their own favorite way to talk about CI. Some call it lean, some call it Six Sigma, some call it the customer experience, some call it employee engagement, some call it quality improvement, business process optimization. And all of them are intended to continuously improve the performance of an organization. So our baseline here is that whatever you call your program, we look at CI as any program using a structured method and infrastructure to improve business performance. Uh, it could be business process optimization, lean, six sigma, et cetera. Uh, and that program, which may have an endless journey, uh, is aligned to the business needs. 
and you either have full-time or part-time participation. In other words, I'm not making the statement that your CI program should have all these different components, but a CI program basically has this structure. Um, I'd like to practice the show of hands out there, um, but I don't think you guys are maybe up to the mode here, but by show of hands, or I should say by uh, any comments, uh, if you can pass along in the question box what you call your CI-like program, I can then relate back to some of those uh, names of those programs and, and enhance our presentation here today. Um, so another way to think about CI um, is that there are components of a continuous improvement where you help on the design and planning of products, processes, and people, the control of them or compliance and the improvement. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the Duran Trilogy of planning, control, and improvement. Some of your CI programs may only think of those things in the improvement box. Um, the evolution of a good CI program literally moves from improvement to planning to control, and then back to improvement again. So under these broad categories, uh, improvement, you may be doing world-class manufacturing if you're a manufacturing company. You may be doing lean. You may be doing Six Sigma. You may be calling it business process optimization. The real heart of those are to drive our level of performance from one not so good level to a great level, or from a great level to a greater level, typically focused on the defect reduction, cost of power quality reduction, waste reduction, cycle time reduction, 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 reduction for benefit. But if you stay in that bucket of improvement, you might be getting down to a point where the analysis takes so, so much longer and harder to get to a level of improvement that you could get to quicker if you move some of your lessons learned into the design side or the planning side. In other words, you can only improve so much and then you have to really start focusing on other areas like innovation, improving innovation, improving sales, revenue, and growth, improving the customer experience if you did not include that in your improvement method, uh, or improve the quality by design activities you have. In other words, as you improve from the level of performance, you learn something with every diagnosis you do, and that information should be fed back to the planners so that we can improve sales, growth, customer experience. Now, out of good improvement comes better control, and out of good design and planning comes better control. So you also have various control activities like PDCA, Plan Do Check Act, Plan Do Study Act, Root Cause Corrective Action, SPC, ISO 9000, et cetera. In other words, compliance-based activities to try to avoid that big spike and to try to maintain whatever was designed in or improved out. So if your CI program uh, includes all that, then you probably have a very mature program. If you're new to CI, uh, you're probably sitting in the improvement bucket. And so one of the reasons for improving the CI program is to move from improvement and make sure you have all the efforts on design as well as compliance. So one quick learning point is if you're not in each of these boxes as part of your CI program, you need to improve your program to expand to it because pretty soon you're going to run out of improvements and run out of things to do. So let's talk about some of the positive reasons to improve. Uh, one is, you know, a an organization implementing Lean Six Sigma business process optimization or we want to improve the customer experience or we're trying to reduce cost of poor quality, all need to follow a similar roadmap. In other words, you don't just make it happen. You go through phases. And one of those phases is the expansion phase. So naturally, if your CI program wasn't designed to expand, then it's a good reason to, to do it. So you need to change some things. And we're going to talk more on that. Um, you may have to refocus the program due to market changes. For instance, the heart of a CI program is project-by-project project improvement. The project you pick today 
may not be the project you need to do three months or six months from now. It might be due to a competitive product announcement. It might be due to a crisis you had. It might be due to cost pressure you have. But something diverts the attention of management. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Another positive reason is that when you're trying out a new concept in the initial phases, like in a continuous improvement program where you're doing demonstration projects, leadership wants to focus on cost reduction or defect reduction or waste reduction or cost of poor quality. And it gets the right attention because leadership sees those are problems and then want to reduce it. However, they soon find out after a bunch of projects that we have customer experience issues and growth issues. So we need to be able to move our resources to those areas. It's also a natural move from focus on a defect reduction, improving product and service reliability to creating new products and services that are even highly reliable than that. Or as you get better at these cost reductions in your first rounds of projects, you learn more about the organization, you learn more about customer dissatisfaction, and you also start thinking broader into the supply chain like in number five. So that brings us to the customer and then later brings us to the supplier. Another one is you. there are new skill sets that come along that you want to employ, new methods, new tools, new technology, and therefore your CI program needs to incorporate them and move on. For instance, you might have begun your program using lean methods. And then, you know, after some experience with lean, you realize you have other problems and you move into root cause analysis or Six Sigma, or you're using you know, hand-drawn Pareto analysis and SBC and you find a nice software product that you want to incorporate. Or uh, you have found that the training and the coaching and the consulting and the analysis could be done through some kind of online learning. Technology changes all require some improvement to CI. The fifth one, as I mentioned, just expanding, expanding left to right, up the supply chain to suppliers and uh, maybe even the supplier suppliers and to the customer and maybe even the customer's customers. In other words, you get, as you get better and better at yourself, you expand outside. And another one is um, the more employees that have a true understanding of customer experience, process analysis, root cause analysis, the better off you'll be. So on one hand, uh, we're doing more and more projects. But if you don't increase employee engagement in those projects, in other words, have the same people do them over and over again, you won't get the benefit. So six, these six reasons are good reasons to improve CI. And if you're sitting there thinking about your company's CI program, do you feel that uh, some of these might be causing you right now to move forward? So negative reasons to improve CI, maintain or gain momentum, meaning we're losing steam, like a new pair of shoes turns old. You know, the shoes get scuffed, they get worn out, and we don't get the same value out of them. Same thing with a lot of our organizational activities, that uh, we want to maintain the, if you're, the uh, kind of the excitement that you had when you started, but two or three years down the road, the excitement's gone. It's kind of grunting, grunt work, and you want to gain momentum. So that's a reason to improve. Secondly, just the stagnation. We're not doing enough. We're not getting anywhere. People aren't doing what they were supposed to do. Third one is just to realign to business needs. The business changes, so should your CI program. It's a natural realignment. That might mean killing projects, killing activities. It might mean increasing some training, some skills, et cetera. And then another one is missing a key step or task in developing uh, the infrastructure. In other words, there are certain things that enable a CI program to thrive uh, and survive. So if you have positive reasons to improve or negative reasons, and maybe you have other reasons. I'd love to see uh, some of your other reasons that you may have out there to improve. Um, 
So please, uh, you know, raise your hand, pass them along. Uh, I have uh, plenty of opportunity to try to answer some questions uh, now. So bother me as much as you can. I'll try not to mute my microphone again. So let's let's focus on some of the um, reasons that you need to improve as it relates to expansion. So you may not think of it this way, but your organization at one point probably made a decision to do some form of continuous improvement journey. That decision was probably based on um, an established leader wanting to be an excellent organization. It could be market driven in the sense that we want to retain leadership or customers told us we had to get better. Uh, or if you're a hospital or, or in the medical industry, you want to be clinically excellent. Uh, or there was some real dissatisfaction, recalls, cost pressures. Whatever the reason, your organization decided to move forward. And you probably went through a number of different opportunities or analysis of approaches, and you made a decision decision what approach to use and you went forward and depending on what you chose it could be an incomplete approach or a complete approach for instance PDSA uh, tend to be a root cause corrective action methodology that may not have the right structure or tool set to get where you want to go uh, the Malcolm Baldridge or the European Quality Award or various government award for excellence maybe the right thing or maybe too complex. Or you started with lean and then you you know you really wanted Six Sigma. So you had these approach is options and you made a decision. Once the decision was made, you then moved into another phase. And that was the preparation phase, where you uh, through education, through discussion, through coaching, you got leadership buy-in, uh, you trained a bunch of management as champions. You nominated and selected uh, your first projects. You began to establish an infrastructure of project nomination, uh, team leader nomination, team se selection, project selection, training, coaching, certification. That's all part of the structure. Uh, and as you prepared those things, uh, you were getting ready for launch. And launch means let's go. And so as you were preparing those things and getting ready for launch, then you launch. And launch really meant, you know, we've trained everybody, we've gotten our first projects off and running, whether it's one or a hundred, it's just our first wave of projects. Uh, and, and as we get results, we communicate the results. We communicate how, how well the project performed, uh, successes, even some of the failures, some of the lessons learned, those projects then may require updated business plans of various areas. Uh, and so you launched and then there's another step, but the next step comes after. So if we're in a first pass, we've done this one time, we wanna review and decide, do we go forward or do we go back and fill in some blanks? For instance, we might've realized that we need more lean than Six Sigma or more Six Sigma than lean or we're a smaller organization and we don't have a lot of people or a lot of complexity and maybe we just need root cause corrective action or business process optimization. In any case, you can go back and adjust. Unfortunately, many organizations don't do that review and they just assume let's do more projects, let's hire and train more belts, let's get more champions. And unfortunately, if you don't do the review, you might not have success and therefore leading to one of the issues like stagnation or ma maintaining momentum. For instance, uh, the tool or method you chose might be too complex for your, or for your organization processes, uh, not the intelligence of your team, but the processes. You know, service processes are less complex uh, in most cases than manufacturing processes, just the fact of using material versus non-material uses equipment versus no equipment. So maybe the tool is too complex or, or not complex enough. Without the review, without a proper decision to go forward, 
with adjustments, you could be expanding projects in areas you don't want to be. So the negative, um, the negative reasons why you need to continuously improve, such as uh, increasing or maintaining momentum, eliminating stagnation, um, keeping uh, business leaders engaged, all might be because we fail to do a review upon the completion of the first projects. And if you do the review, then you have a pretty good chance that your expansion, which is another reason to, ex to improve your program, is useful. For instance, what do we expand? Well, let's say we start off with two projects or five projects or 10 projects, which is a good start. Well, what's the next 10 or 15 or 20? Well, the question is, what do we need to do? Well, we could, ex we could increase our, we could do projects that are in different areas, like different parts of the value stream. Uh, we can move towards our um, supplier, more towards our customer. We can increase more projects. Uh, or let's assume we started 10 projects on January 1st and July 1st, we finished them all. And on July 2nd, we might start another 10 projects. Or maybe we run, you know, two projects every quarter. The number of projects should be driven by the need of the improvements you're trying to do. But nonetheless, it's expansion because it's beyond the original, the original projects. You know, Dr. Duran um, and the Duran Institute have a um, kind of bit of lesson learned and advice we give. And that is, if you're only going to do one or two projects, then none of this matters. You know, you don't need structure. You don't need all this. But you don't get a lot of improvement. So if you want a lot of improvement, you're going to have more projects. And if you have more projects, you need to manage them. And if you manage them, you need to make sure they're getting the right resources and support. So as you increase projects, uh, it increases pressure on getting resources, infrastructure. But if you stop after one or two projects, then you really didn't have a CI program. You just had a couple of CI projects. You also might change the type of projects you have. For instance, Many organizations start out with simple root cause analysis, DMAIC, or lean. But you realize that some of the problems you're trying to solve may not be related to those. And therefore, you might want to use world-class manufacturing, or you might want to use a design method to improve quality by design. Or you realize that the gains you can get from defect reduction are nowhere near the gains you can get if you had a new customer focused service or design so we focus on innovation or and I believe this is where many uh, organizations are today they've been cost cutting for a long time they've been doing defect reduction for a long time and they're just not going to get enough improvement in the organization unless they focus on increasing sales and growth so the type of projects can change and the nice thing about CI is that there are methods that it can change with. Refer back to the Duran Trilogy in my earlier slides of planning, control, and improvement. If all you have in your toolbox is DMAIC, then expansion into other areas may be hard. If all you have in your toolbox is lean, then expanding into innovation and growth may be hard. So you're always increasing and adding types of projects. Another form of expansion is adding new skills to the already trained people so they can do more and more. For instance, um, we want to do innovation projects. Therefore, we need to add skills on how to do innovation. Maybe it's how to do define, uh, how to do quality by design. Uh, it could be agile software development, but we need to add skills and therefore get more involvement, more engagement. Or we just want to engage more people, so we try to do more projects, and we have to add more skills to do that. And then another area of expansion, which is natural expansion, is that we tend to focus on product or service defects first, but we tend to go from product to service to back office to customer. We'd like you to go from customer to product to service to back office, but a lot of times companies are not comfortable uh, focusing right on the customer. So natural expansion in a continuous improvement program um, happens when you naturally expand because it's the right thing to do. People typically ask us, well, how long 
do we expand? And so the answer is, well, how big are you and how much improvement do you need? We have organizations that we know that have been working 10 years. Uh, they're in the sustain mode, but they expand by doing the things listed here below. Other organizations are doing very, very well, and they cut back on expansion uh, and do less in more of a maintenance mode. We'd like to see that happen when you get into the next phase, which is sustain. But the level of continuous improvement you do should be based on the importance and need of the business. Let's pause for a moment. Let's talk about some, some continuous improvement due to the market or the business changes, as I mentioned. So there are a lot of external factors that are happening faster and faster, and you never know when something is going to pop up. It could be related to globalization, regulatory and compliance, competitive new product on the market. A competitive failure on the market and you're going to take advantage of it. Uh, technology advancements, um, slow market penetration because you don't have anything innovative. Uh, so the external factors put pressure on the company to do something different. The company itself then has internal factors, uh, things that are driving them crazy. Uh, for instance, we keep firefighting, we're unproductive, we're inefficient, we're, we, we're disengaged, we're unmotivated. And at the same time, there's a resource uh, problem. There's not a big supply of resources. Uh, one of the dilemmas organizations have is that we can't find people or time to do improvement because we're trying to do what we do every day. So these external and internal factors and the lack of resources force you to review and renew your CI program and your CI journey. In the absence of doing that, one of the reasons for stagnation and lack of main, maintaining performance is you all of a sudden are out of sync with the leaders, you're out of sync with the organization, you're out of alignment. And, and then all of a sudden the resources start getting cut back and people said, oh, we did that before, we did that before. That does not have to happen. Uh, your organization CI program should be constantly ebbing and flowing with the business ebbing and flowing. Uh, I know uh, CI executives that have been their jobs 25 years, and I know some that are only in it 25 months. Uh, and the ones that are in it 25 months fail to learn these practical lessons that you have to ebb and flow and continuously improve your continuous improvement program. So there's um, a question here. How long or how often should you renew, evaluate your CI program? And although that's going to come up in a moment, uh, in reality, annually is probably the best way to do it. Although the uh, leader of the CI program may be doing it on a regular basis, but when we say re review it, we're talking with the, the local leadership team to have an actual activity where you step back and you say, let's take a look at where we are. Is our project portfolio right? Are we working the projects fast enough? Um, are we getting projects done, solved, and sustained? So there's a usually on an annual basis, just like any annual planning. Uh, if you're doing an annual planning cycle for business planning, that, that's when you want to incorporate it. Um, another time might be twice a year. One reason for that is projects tend to be getting done faster and faster. So the question might be, uh, let's do them sooner. Or matter of fact, if a market change occurs, it might be a good time to stop, review, improve, move forward. Now, the last piece of the roadmap, um, sustaining CI, is the area where many organizations tend to try to be on their own why? Well, because uh, organizations like Duran have a business model where we are teaching you to be able to do it yourself. And so the belief is by the time we've done expansion, we have internal expertise, we have internal resources, and we can sustain the performance ourselves. 
And if you are one of the organizations that have created internal capability, you are probably sustaining things. Uh, if you are one that skipped a few steps along the way, then you might be having trouble sustaining things. Now, what does sustain mean and how do you do it? Well, if you start from top to bottom, you have on the left, you have the organization has clearly defined annual goals for improvement. You have a knowledgeable staff from top to bottom who can be engaged either in project by project improvement or in support of project by project improvement, either as a champion, a team member, a team leader, or a department that has to implement new uh, solutions to keep things going. And as a result, we have clearly defined business processes, well managed, delivering to customers as properly they should be, and you have a periodic review and audit of the organization. Now, if you are in the sustain mode, in the sustain mode, that doesn't mean you don't improve your program. It means you have a lot of maturity, and maturity requires that you look outside yourself to see if you can learn from someone else in terms of how are they doing. Sometimes in sustain through the annual review process, you go back to decide and say, hey, we need to do something different. We're at a new high level of performance. We wanna shift all our attention now to growth. We wanna shift all our attention to developing new innovative products. That's okay, that's a good thing. But because you do that, you literally now go back to decide, prepare, launch, and expand. In other words, it's a new cycle. Uh, it doesn't mean you're giving up everything, it just means you're moving to a new level. So any of the positive or negatives related to a roadmap are either the result of not knowing what to do in each phase, skipping steps or tasks along the way, or just uh, ignoring the signs that something is not right and doing nothing about it. But for those of you who are on a good uh, kind of movement from phase to phase, each phase should be distinct. Matter of fact, uh, another question that just came up here, which is pretty related to this, why can't we just have a designated improvement time every quarter? Um, and, and, I, and I think they can interpret that in one of two ways, maybe you could help me. Um, in other words, every quarter we review quality improvement activities. That's a great thing. There's two reasons for that. One is it gives you quick choices to do something fast, but also if things change in that quarter, you can act. Unfortunately, a lot of organizations, particularly bigger ones, may not have four times in the year available. So maybe it's two or maybe it's three. Um, a question of how do you know if the project isn't working and when to stop or start it? And that relates to another question, how, how do you best review a project? Um, there is a criteria and methodology for a project. And if the project, for instance, is a Six Sigma-like project and you're going through define, measure, analyze, improve, and control, or a plan, do, check, act, the natural review is gate by gate. In other words, letter by letter. After, decide, after define, we review. After measure, review. After analyze, review. And the questions we ask in each, of those, in each of those are different. But we have confidence that if each project is moving through its gate properly, then the project will get completed and that problem will be solved and the business will move forward. Uh, in the absence of that, uh, we may not get successful projects all the time, or we may not get the solution to stick because the absence of the gate review did not identify the obstacle that might be in the way of the solution. So there is a criteria, and, and by the way, if you would like to see a project review criteria, please send an email to us and we'll be happy to uh, send that out to those who would like to see that. Now, I mentioned missing tasks, steps, and structure, and, and I don't expect to cover this all, but under each of these phases, there are things that an organization has to do to get them done. Uh, for instance, before you decide, you need to know what the options are, understand what's out there. You might have to do some kind of organizational assessment, process assessment, skills assessment. Uh, you may have to spend time with leadership, understanding their strategic goals and where they're going so that you can create a good deployment plan. 
But under each of these steps, there are some what we call benchmarks. The, the organization that are most successful moving from decide to sustain all do these things. There are other things, but these are the critical path. And so if you're having difficulty in any of the phases, when we do company assessments, maturity assessments, or we're trying to help a, a company fix their CI program, we go back to these questions or, or we go back to these tasks and say, hey, you know, you're, you're not getting projects completed on time because you're not getting team members showing up. Why are you not getting team members showing up? Did you train the champions and did you set a policy that champions free up team members? Oh, no, we didn't train the champions. Well, you didn't train the champions. How do you expect the teams to get support? Well, we got great leaders. Well, the leaders are not, the project leaders are not necessarily business leaders. They have different roles. So in other words, we missed a task. Uh, so often we find people picking problems and having the wrong method because they didn't know what method. So missing importance tasks or steps or structure can lead to real chaos later. But if you do carry out the task, then you have a much better success rate or chance of success than those who do not. Now, there are so many different um, discussions we could have regarding, uh, I believe, my nine or my ten uh, reasons for continuously improving CI, but we'll just keep it here at this point and maybe we'll pick them up at a later time. Um, okay, let me, let me answer this question. Uh, what will what will be the best approach to implement a CI, continuous improvement idea system, to collect ideas from your employees or associates? Um, you know, that's a really good question and uh, I'll try to answer it, but immediately when someone asks this question, we ask, why do you want employee input? And if you get asked for employee input, will you carry out the response to it. So if your organization truly values the input of its employees and you solicit input from them, then do something about it. Now, the best approach is not when people anonymously write out a piece of paper and stick it in a box or easily send an email through an email. They tend to be vague. The best approach is setting up focus like group discussions, meaning Bring like people, bring people together and say, you know, for the next 30 minutes, uh, we'd like to hear if you have any ideas that we can improve our CI program or we can improve our process or we can, or what problems are we having? Uh, internally, the best approach is a live focus group, whether that's on a web-based web focus group, a conference call, or in a room. We believe that's the best method. Why? Because you're getting automatic engagement and you are able to steer the discussion to not uh, issues related to complaints about my job, my pay, and that. Really, you want to help them focus on the CI program that you're doing. Uh, I believe there was a, a second question. Uh, nope, that's it. So keep them coming. So what do we recommend you do? Well, one is at least conduct an annual audit of your CI performance. What does that mean? Did the projects that you, I should say, did the initiatives that you implemented achieve the desired business results? If you had three projects or 300 projects and those projects all had project missions, what percent of them achieved the mission? What percent exceeded the mission? What was the total benefit from that? That's what we mean by business results. If the business results are good, then you probably had a good program. If the business results are bad, then we have to ask why. Uh, secondly, uh, evaluate the skills attained. Uh, not how many people are trained, but how many people are utilizing the skills that they were trained in improvement projects. And we tend to see one metric of that is related to the ideas. How many ideas per person are we getting uh, each year as a result of this. Uh, what percent of our population was engaged in CI activities? Some metrics that you can qualitatively look at or quantitatively look at to say, 
hey, we're either doing the right things, we need to continue it, or we're not doing the right things, we need to figure out why and do something else. For those organizations that are unique, or they're in the expansion mode, or they're in the sustain mode, you probably want to look outside yourselves at other more mature organizations. For instance, I was speaking recently at a pharmaceutical uh, leadership group. They didn't want to look at other pharmaceutical companies. They wanted to look outside their industry. So we got them to look at aerospace. Uh, aerospace may want to look at high-tech electronics. High-tech electronics might want to look at a high-tech electronics manufacturer somewhere else. Or maybe the high-tech electronics company uh, has a customer service issue and they want to look at Disney uh, or something like that. So looking outside your industry is another way to improve your program because it opens up your eyes. Now I use these acronyms EFQM, NQA, so European Federation Quality Model Winners, National Quality Award in the United States, the Baldrige Award winners. Uh, their applications are available online and you can see what they did. You don't even have to go physically see them. So you can learn what do they do. Uh, another key is to align with key leaders. Um, we have a belief that all leaders move in single file. They don't all get on board with CI right away, but some do. And you want to make sure that your program is lined with the shakers and movers uh, and not the ones who are just trying to get a name for themselves. So is your program aligned properly? Are you reporting at the right level? Uh, you know, the program and staff, I was in one of the top questions I get, where should you report the CI program to? Uh, our belief, if it's not reporting to the same people as your chief operations people, then it's in the wrong place. For instance, if your CI program is just a training program and it reports into human resource training and development, there's a pretty good chance that the operational people are going to look at it as a training program. If the CI program reports to the head of operations, the head uh, leadership person, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to see that as a tool to help us improve operations. So where it reports is key. Uh, now, if you're a multi-billion dollar organization, things have to be kept in perspective. It's got to report at the right level in the right place. So if I'm a division or I'm a site in a division, then the CI program should report to the site person at the best level. If I'm in the corporate headquarters, then it should report at the best level. Uh, naturally, you can call other people that have been through your paths before. This is not just a selling plug here. This is just to say there are experts out there that have been through some of the difficulties you may be seeing and they have their own data uh, contact them we get questions all the time you know what do we do now what do we do next uh, and lastly um, somebody within your ci program whether it be your belts or senseis or experts or the leader of it should always be monitoring the use of expanding methods and tools you know for instance uh, people learn about six sigma and demaic but they don't necessarily know about Six Sigma DMAV, meaning the design method to apply design for Six Sigma. So, you know, how do you find out when you read, do research? Uh, another way to think about it is what new technology is coming out that might help my CI program? You know, moving from handwritten calculations to Excel spreadsheets to mini tab like software uh, takes the pain out of things, or moving from uh, process flow charting to iGraphics process simulation. Uh, so there are tools out there. What do they do? They enhance the improvements. They enhance your CI program, make you do it better, faster, cheaper. Uh, and also, the more technology you use, the more data you're recording, the better chance of sustainment coming later. So I hope that uh, we shed some light on the objectives uh, that we set out to initially, uh, which was to help you understand that uh, project by project improvement as part of a CI program is not linear, meaning you don't have to keep expanding. It should ebb and flow with the business. That you need to uh, improve your program because the journey you're on with that program has its own ebbs 
because of market changes and internal changes. And we hope that uh, you'll continue to look beyond your industry for the next best improvement or better yet. Uh, and I'm going to give it leave uh, one example here. If you're the Toyota or Toyota uh, of the world that, in other words, they got really good based on their methodology, uh, there's a pretty good chance things have changed enough that they, even they have to still look outside of themselves. Sometimes it just goes back to basics. And I've seen this happen in multinational companies. After five years, I, I interviewed, um, I mean, in America, I interviewed Baldridge winners and 25% of them were seeing a decline in their performance. And when they asked the question why, they found the same thing. We cut back on the training, we cut back on the leaders, we cut back on the coaching, we cut back, cut back, cut back, because we thought that, um, you know, we trained everybody, when in fact 25% of the workforce changed over that five-year period. Sometimes you got to go back to the basics. So I hope that uh, you have gained something from our presentation today. I do want to um, answer one more question I have here and then call it for a day. What is your suggestion around getting senior leadership on board with a CI program? Uh, great question, typical question, and let me try this. Uh, if you've already implemented a CI program and your leadership is not on board, then it's harder than if you are in the beginning stages of your CI program getting them on board. Why do I say that? Well, if you're already along the way, there's a pretty good chance they weren't involved and therefore they don't feel like they have participated in the planning of it and therefore it may not be part of their business plan. So to answer the question related to that type of environment, uh, you need to show the value that the CI program will bring that business leader. That value has to come in terms of uh, waste reduction, defect reduction, improved customer experience. It's gotta be in the language of money. And the way we answer that question all the time is the language of money. If you are beginning a CI program and you, you're trying to get senior leadership on board, we would like you to utilize the language of money. Do a cost of poor quality estimate. Uh, identify two or three businesses similar to yours as to what they have gained. Um, in other words, show them the money and show them the method that got the money and keep it simple so that they can absorb that. The sustainment of a CI program has more to do with the leadership getting buy-in as soon as possible than it does with anything else. Uh, no leader ever stopped something that worked, and that's about the best I can do with that. I hope that you will join us at our next and last webinar of the year. Uh, another topic where we will probably have a guest speaker along with me. How much data analysis is enough? Uh, let me give you a preview. Uh, often projects do not find the root cause because there's not enough data analysis. And other times they found the root cause, but they think they have to keep doing more data analysis. How do you know you're right? Stay tuned. Show up on December 20th. Uh, and you will see what we have to offer. And I hope that you, around the world, if you're planning the holiday season, enjoy the next few weeks. If you're closing out your annual business, uh, enjoy the pain that you'll be going through and hope that you get through a new year. And I'd like to thank you all for participating and see you next month. Uh, keep in mind that you will receive a copy of this um, as soon after uh, from my staff. It will be coming to you. And we'd love to hear your feedback. Please send me an email, send me a note, and uh, have a good day. Thank you.